Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Justin Peart. I'm a professor here in the School of Business and also the director of the Institute for Global Entrepreneurship. I want to welcome you to our uh, Entrepreneurship Empowerment Bootcamp. This is the third in the series and the final one as well. And um, today we'll have Professor Veronica Paz, who is going to speak with us about accounting and uh, financial statements and so on. It's good to see you here. It's not a large number, but that's fine. Uh, it shows that you're serious about entrepreneurship, that you are committed to the cause, and that you, know, you really do want to start your own business, and hopefully one day you'll be able to do that. Uh, before we get into Dr. Paz's presentation, I'd just like to run through a few things uh, dealing with the formation of companies and so on. So in terms of the organization itself, you have your legal and organizational structure, and there are a number of options that you have available to you. You could go with proprietorship, otherwise known as um, sole ownership, where you are in charge of everything and you don't really have any partners working with you. Uh, on the other hand, you could have a partnership where you have a number of individuals uh, working with you on the development of the, of the business. And there are implications there for uh, the payment of taxes and uh, liability issues as well. Uh, the corporation is another option. Uh, we have the regular corporation, which is just a number of people coming together, each, each uh, person having a certain number of shares within the corporation, and those shares equal the amount of ownership that each individual has. Uh, the government has made some adjustments for small businesses over the years. One of the first things they did was to um, start the S Corporation, which had the impact of changing the tax liability uh, situation, where with the S Corporation, you actually have a situation where the income that you make on the S Corporation is treated as personal income as against company income. Okay, so there are some tax liabilities where that is concerned. The LLC or Limited Liability uh, Corporation is similar to the S Corporation, just that there are a few changes in terms of who can actually be part of the uh, LLC. Uh, very important in any organization are your key personnel. And of course, you have the owners of the company, you have the officers, and uh, you have people who are regarded as decision makers in terms of you know, who makes the final decision when it comes to certain matters and um, how are those decisions made. Now, the offices of the organization are expected to be there to provide support and also to, I guess you could say, ask the tough questions. Uh, you don't want to be surrounded by people who are yes persons, who always say yes to everything and don't have a mind of their own. You want to have individuals who are willing to challenge you and to help you to move in the right direction as well. Key supporters, uh, you have your financiers. Usually when you start your business, it's pretty difficult for you to get finance. Uh, you might have to use your personal income, your savings. Some people go um, take cash from their insurance policies. Some people even use credit cards. That might not be advisable, but you know sometimes you're taking the risk because it's really difficult for you to get funding from the bank. The Small Business Association, the SBA, does offer some amount of financing as well, but it's very difficult for you to uh, get to the point where you would qualify for that financing. So looking at those difficulties, many times you have to turn to either your own resources or the resources of friends and family. Of course, once again with that, you have to be very careful because there, there are a number of stories of people who have 
got me into business with their family members and their friends, and that has had the impact of destroying the relationship because things don't go as planned. So banks are usually further down the line. Banks are more willing to lend you money when they see that you already have a successful business going. It's been there for a number of years. You have cash flow statements to show them and so on. And um, you know, if they're convinced the company is doing well and that you can pay the loan back, then it will be easier for you to get uh, financing. Uh, each company has to be aware too of the legal environment in which it operates. Uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And so each company needs to know, okay, what is allowed, what is not allowed. Needs to know if there's regulations and how that will impact their business. It's always good to have some insurance as well. Uh, you go back to Murphy's Law. Whatever will go wrong or whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And you just never know. So if you have a business and you have assets, you want to have insurance just in case something goes wrong. Uh, you want to have liability insurance too. You're making products, you're offering a service. If customers uh, are somewhat dissatisfied with the service or if the service that you provide causes some amount of damage to the customers, then you want to make sure you have your insurance to cover that situation. I know Dr. Paz will speak more about accounting, but uh, small businesses on a whole have a choice of either doing their accounting in-house, in other words, having their own personnel do the accounting, or um, outsourcing, especially for smaller businesses where it might be difficult to uh, find the resources to hire somebody full-time, then outsourcing might be the better option. Now, when we speak about business, one of the terms that comes up from time to time, especially in relations to marketing, is the issue of location. You hear location, location, location. That's like the most, or one of the most important issues. And uh, when you're thinking about locating your business, you have to think about accessibility. How easy is it for your customers to get to your business? How easy it is for your employees, uh, your suppliers, your distributors? You don't want to have them you know, in a situation where it's very difficult for them to access your business. There should also be potential for expansion. Most of us go into business with the hope that things will grow over time and we're going to be working for that growth. So you want to make sure that you consider a location that allows for expansion. Other things uh, you want to be fully aware of is are, are the utilities, it's basic utilities, water, electricity, and so on, that you're going to have to pay. Uh, your support services and your competitors, you can never ignore your competitors. So you should never ignore your competitors. Uh, you have to keep tabs on what your competitors are doing and uh, make sure that you are either proactive in terms of doing things before they do, or if they implement some type of strategy, make sure that you are in a position to react to whatever strategy they might implement. Okay, at this time I'd like to invite Dr. Paz to speak on finance and accounting, and when she's done, we'll wrap up the session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what I want to share with all of you is basically what I call the language of business. Accounting is all about numbers. Numbers are your friends. Okay, do not be fearful. Everything will tie out. And basically these financial statements that we're going to go over is kind of like the fundamentals that you need in order to get some of that financing that uh, Justin was talking about earlier, Dr. Pert. So our agenda topics are basically, we're going to go through a full set of financials. Your financials should have at least three basic financial statements. First being an income statement, that's usually what you prepare first. That, we'll get into that, those have your revenues and expenses. Some of the utilities that Dr. Pert mentioned are included in this statement and we'll go through some of that. Your cash, cash is king. 
Cash flows are very important. Most notably is cash flow from operations. You want your operations of the business, your day-to-day -day functionalities of your business to be positive. You want it to give you money, you want to make money, that way you earn a salary, and if that is positive, that is the forefront of you getting some financing from the SBA or from banks, all right? Balance sheet. As CPAs, Certified Public Accountants, we all love the balance sheet. Most institutions like banks or other auditors or anything of that nature will look at your balance sheet, which includes your assets that uh, Dr. Pert mentioned to have insurance on. It'll include liabilities, things that you owe, you know, pesky little things, and it'll include what you have as equity and your net worth. And in preparing this, pro forma, meaning that this is estimates. You're going to estimate these information because you're, you're, you're a new business and you're starting out. And so there'll be assumptions to that and there'll be a budget because you want to make sure you actually monitor your expenses to your budget. Like you would your own home, let's say. So, and please feel free to ask any questions along the way. If you see it, anything I'm, I'm mentioning you're not familiar with, let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, go further into details. Your income statement, we should start with that. That is also known as a profit and loss statement. We call it a P&L, you know, net profit, bottom line. You'll see all of these terms used for that. So we want to make sure that you're familiar. Accounting is full of jargon, full of terminology. Our, our vernacular is all special and different. And we use a lot of acronyms, you know, P&L to stand for profit and loss. So this is over a period of time. You will note that your income statement is for the 12 months ended December 31st, if you have a calendar year, or for the first month that you are in business, okay? And here you show the money that you will make after all your expenses are accounted for. Now, some expenses, some examples of expenses are the utilities, your rent, you know, you have a warehouse space or a location that you're going to be accessible so that your customers can come in. All of this will be on your income statement. And then income statements are usually read from top to bottom, and usually it starts off with the revenues, and if you look at the handouts that I gave you, I believe you will see this fabulous income statement for three years. Okay, and what you see here has your sales. Okay, and basically then it has all of your operating expenses, salaries, payroll, services, supplies, advertising, utilities, your telephone, interest, depreciation, and then you have your net income. So basically what this is, is the money you make. So let's assume any examples of a business that we'd like to start. Anything? Maybe pizza? Let's talk about pizza. I like pizza a lot. What about pizza? We like pizza? Let's talk about pizza. Love pizza. Let's talk about pizza. We are going to have a pizza. Paz's Pizza Place. I like it. PPP. What about that? Right? Let's talk about Paz's Pizza Place, right? So we are going to buy supplies. What supplies do you think we're going to need to make pizza? Dough, flour, cheese. Love cheese. Thank you very much. Cheese is delicious. What else do we put on our pizza? Come on. Tomatoes. What about ham? Anybody like anchovies? On their pizza? No, no me neither. So we're going to buy the kitchen. I agree. I absolutely agree. So basically, those are your expenses. So that's your cost of goods sold. Your good is your pizza, right? And so the cheese, the flour, the um, pepperoni, the ham, the green peppers, all the vegetarian stuff that we want, all of that is basically the supplies that you use directly related to the cost of making that pizza. And the person that makes it, you know, like when you go to the pizza shop and the dough, you know, they're doing all this fun stuff with the dough, that guy too, his salary is part of cost of goods sold. And then you have the ovens that you have to buy and basically and all the supplies, you got to put them in those nice pretty cartons, right, and all that good stuff. And it's got to say PPP on it for Paz's Pizza Place, right? So those are some of the things that you'll include in your income statement. And usually here we give you three years when we audit financial statements. Three years is what we normally do, all right? So we use the current year, the prior year, current year, and then a year forward. Pro forma, and this means estimated, right? So we're going to estimate these expenses, all right? So we're sticking to my Paz's Pizza Place because I'm a little hungry, so that'll be great. So we'll keep to that theory, right? Excellent. Any, so, so far, so good. Our income statement has the revenues, the money we take in, and the expenses, everything we spend to kind of make our pizzas. Okay. Pro forma basically means that you're guessing. So we're going to start looking, and these are educated guesses. We're going to start looking, it's guesstimates as I call them, right? And we're going to start looking at projected and forecast. 
We're going to assume that we're going to open in January of 2014, and so we're going to start about putting our projected numbers in there. So we think at the beginning our sales are going to be low because we're going to do some heavy advertising, give some really good promotions, you know, maybe buy two, get one free type of pizza or two for ten bucks, whatever we're going to decide to do, and our marketing people will help us with these great advertisings and promotions, and then we're going to keep projecting our revenues forward. And the whole, this is the formula. Each financial statement in accounting, we have like a formula because we like everything to balance. Debits equal credits in accounting. It's all fabulous. Everything, two plus two is four, I promise you. Every time we do it, I promise. Okay? So here are the revenues. What are our revenues? Money we receive in. Brilliant. Excellent. And what are our expenses? Everything we have to pay out. So give me some examples of expenses. Rent, utilities, um, excellent. You're, you have to pay the employees. Employees, great. And then at the end when you take all the money you make, just like in your house, you know, you work, you bring all the money in, and then you spend all the money, then what you have left is known as net income. And that hopefully is a positive number, meaning you, ha you make more money than you spend. We do not want to be the government and have 16 trillion of debt, right? We want to make sure we bring money in and we don't spend as much, okay? Excellent. And in this pro forma detail, like in your, here, you're going to detail all of this out. And if there's expenses in here that I didn't include, you add the line to it. Okay? And this should all be done in Excel in some type of computer program so that way it's very professional because this is what you'll give to anybody that wants to invest, even your family, if you want to make sure that, you know, you want to get your siblings or your parents involved so that they know that you've done your due diligence, meaning you've done all your homework to make sure that this is a good investment in this business and that has a pizza place is going to be phenomenal. We're going to make the best, healthiest, low-fat, delicious pizza. Right? I don't even think that, that can really happen, but I'm, I'm sure it will. Okay. So, and you're going to do this for how months, quarters, years, however you want to do it. You don't have to do every month. You could do like maybe three months in one quarter. So you'll have four in that year, however you want. But this is the first step of understanding how much money you're going to need and how much money you're going to spend. Okay? So far so good? Smash it. So then we've talked about revenues, which you earn. I just want to make sure that we keep it because repetition, you'll never forget. And this you'll hear all the time. If you're going to a bank or the SBA to get a loan, you'll hear this sales revenue. So we're going to call our revenue pizza revenue because that's what we sell, right? And we might want to break it down, maybe Sicilian and maybe, uh, you know, flat pizza, what have been pizzas. However we want to do it, we can do that in our accounting. But we want to make sure that we record this when it's earned. That is GAP. GAAP is generally accepted accounting principles, and that's what we accountants have to follow. Like lawyers have to follow the letter of the law, we have to follow what's known as GAAP. Okay? And expenses, we thank you for giving us some examples. What was your name again? I'm sorry? Lakita. Lakita, thank you, because you gave us most of these. Wages, taxes, marketing. And now here, you record these expenses when they're incurred. Meaning the minute that you have, like say you picked up the phone and ordered all that pepperoni, I want 10 pounds of pepperoni, and then once you get it delivered, that you've incurred that expense now. You've received some goods, so now you owe some money to that vendor for all that pepperoni. Okay? So far, so good? We understand the income statement? Because that's the first step. We have a few more to go. <laughs> Just a few, I promise. So this is what it looks like. So here's my pizza. I called it, oh, I called it Pizza Roma. Sorry, I didn't call it Paz's. I, I just came up with that now, and I think it's much better. Paz's Pizza Place. I think that's awesome. Okay? So you see we have pizza revenue, and you see all my expenses. So it's very simple, and I made $600 in this instance right here. So basically, I took in $15,700 in pizza revenue. We had a good, uh, for the month ended, we had one month in September, so we did really well. And then this is what we spent, wages, was our biggest expense, and you will see that. Mostly intellectual uh, capacity, people are probably the most expensive. And then various other expenses that we have. So we have a net income of $600. Okay? So, so far, so good. We're doing good. Perfect. So now that we have that, we have what is known as cash flow projections. So right now, we're, when we're doing the income statement, we're doing that when we as a business sell the items or when we as a business get the expenses, right? But now cash is a little different. Hopefully you are, you know, getting money when I come to the, when people come to your pizza place and pay you and hopefully the credit cards don't bounce and if they give you checks you don't have NSF fees or non-sufficient fund fees or anything like that. So in doing cash flows you need to always make sure you know what your cash position is, meaning how much money you have in, um, in your bank account. Inflows are just that, you get money, 
right? You get money from selling the pizzas. You get money from loans. Probably a line of credit is a type of loan. And then you get money if you sell your assets. Maybe you sold an old oven, pizza oven, and then you bought a newer one. So maybe you sold that oven for $10,000 and you bought a $30,000 pizza oven, you know? Because you can make more pizzas at this time because your business is expanding and growing. Outflows are expenditures, which is just a fancy word for expenses. All the money you have to spend. And you may have to pay on the loan if you actually got one. And you may have to buy that pepperoni as business purchases and stuff like that, the dough and the cheese, all that good stuff. So then we have what is known as our cash flow. And we have three, in a statement of cash flows, there are three activities. And this is how it's done. There's operating activities, investing, and financing. Now, operating activities is pretty much your net income. It tells you everything that you've kind of done. So what you do in the course of business, your normal day-to-day -day business. Investment is just what it says. You're investing in something. Maybe you're investing in new property, that like pizza oven that I was talking about. That would be an investment activity. Maybe you have a lot of cash on hand and you don't want to just earn no interest, so you want to put that in the bank and possibly buy a security, a CD, or a trading security, something to that nature. Financing is how you get the money. There's usually two sources of financing, okay, which is yourself shareholder financing, equity, like you put money in the business, owner equity, and there's usually the banks or you know other loans from either individuals or institutions. And that's what goes in financing activity. And if you look, you have a 12-month cash flow handout. This is critical. This is the first step. If you do your income statement right on a quarterly basis, then you do your cash flow on a quarterly basis. But if you do your income statement on a monthly basis, then you do your cash flow on a monthly basis, okay? And by doing that, then you know how much money you have in and out, okay? And that's basically what we have here. Cash receipts means you are receiving money, so that's hopefully from all the customers that are coming to buy our delicious pizza. And then cash outflows is what you pay out, like the wages and the supplies and the insurance and the payments for the loans and the equipment. Okay, so we've started with our income statement. We know hopefully that we're going to make some money. And then now we know from our cash flow statement pretty much how much money we're going to have in the bank at any given time. Yes, ma'am. Now, um, say if you have to pay for unexpected um, expenses, say your oven breaks and you need to get it repaired, would that go on your cash flow? Yes, it would be an excellent question. What you would do is you would report that as an expense, repairs and maintenance on the equipment, right? So that's going on your income statement. Right, so you're going to put your income statement as the expense, but then it's going to be a cash outflow because you're actually paid the guy to fix it on your cash flow statement. Okay, yes. In accounting, it's double entry bookkeeping is what we do. So we always have a debit and a credit. I'm giving you like the nitty gritty because if you use a, a software like QuickBooks or something, it'll do both sides for you. But every accounting entry usually has two sides, a debit and a credit. So you're, you're kind of hitting more than one statement at one time. Okay? Good question. Thank you. All right. So now this, if you don't remember anything I've said, and hopefully you'll remember tons of stuff, but remember cash is king. It's king. You must know how much money you have at any given time. Okay? And that's why a cash flow statement is very important. And this is the hardest part for small business owners. Because as you start a, a business, you're kind of everything, right? You're the IT person, you're the advertiser, you're the marketer, you're the cashier, you're everything. So this is very difficult. You do not want to take your eye off the ball, cash. If you don't have money, you do not have money to buy things. And you can't pay employees and you can't expand. So this is not only for yourself as a business owner, but for yourself as an individual. Please know how much money you have in your account. Balance your checking account. Balance your, state, your cash, okay? Very, very important. All right. So that's our cash flow. So this is what it looks like here. So this one I kind of made up because I think we all know Google, right? If you don't know something, Google it, right? So this one I made up as a saving the cash flow for Google. And this is known as the indirect method. Now, as Dr. Pert was mentioning earlier, that we will have, you know, you might outsource this. This is probably what a CPA or an accountant would do for you. And there are two methods of producing a statement of cash flow, indirect and direct. This is indirect because we start with net income. Where did we get net income? What statement was that on? The income statement smashing! Fabulous! I'm so excited! 
And so here it's like what you're doing is you're reconciling cash. So you're taking your net income that you recorded when you earned it or when you incurred it, and you're adding and subtracting when you received money or not. Okay? And then here's that investing I told you about, investing activities. When we invest it, so here we bought equipment. That's my pizza oven. I mean, you know, it's helping me out with my pizza oven, right? And then here's what net cash provided and used. See how that's in parentheses? That means we use this money to buy equipment. And then here's financing. We got, finally, the bank gave us a loan. Hallelujah. We got a loan from the bank. So now we got money from that. And you see, now you get the net change in cash. And then here's the cash at the end of 2013. So we have 240, probably billion, because it's Google. But in this case, you know, I didn't put the zeros on here to make it simple, just for uh, simplicity. But this is what an accountant would do for you. And this is what you can do quite easily. Yes, ma'am. OK, the equipment purchase was the was the whatever, the $60. Pizza. Uh -huh. The net cash provided or used to buy it was the same system. So if we do the calculation in the line, are we subtracting the 60 twice? No, you're just doing it once. This is in accounting. Anytime you see a single line, that shows like a subtotal. And you see how we have a double line here? That shows our ending total. That's usually what we do when we do statements. This is If we had more lines, you would see them here. The only problem is you have to include this line, net cash provided or used, to show each category what you've gotten from them. But you see here we had more of it, so it's a little bit easier. I only put one line here because that's usually what you see in startup companies. So this is just telling you this is the items, this is the total. If I had three items here of 60, it would be 180. Okay, okay? good question. Any other questions? So far so good? Smashing. All right, so we've got two statements out of the way. We're getting there. Still with me? Yeah. All right, fabulous. Now the balance sheet. This is where you will be highly scrutinized from an institutional perspective. Banks look at this quite carefully. Okay, now this, the good and bad thing about this, it's at a given date, meaning as of today's date. Your balance sheet will change every day because hopefully your cash will change every day. Hopefully your accounts receivable, which is money that customers owe you, you will collect. Okay, but this gives you, the big piece here is that your assets minus your liabilities gives you owner's equity or net worth. And you will see that term a lot. What's your net worth? Net worth is you take everything you owe, you own, your assets, minus everything you owe, and you have your net worth. So let's assume we have a car. It costs $20,000. That car you own, hopefully, once you pay it off but you owe 10,000 on that car. So 20 minus 10 is what? 10, and what is that 10 to us then? Our net worth, right? Because you have what you own, your money, your, your car, what you owe on the car, that pesky note that you gotta pay every month, right? $300 a month, so that's 10,000, so that means your net worth for that particular car is $10,000. Let's just assume it's in thousands, right? So that's your net worth, things that you own minus things that you owe. Like your house, right? You have a $3,000 house and you have a mortgage of $100,000. So then your net worth would be in that case, 300 minus 100, you get $200,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. If you owe it, that's, your, that's still your worth? Yes, you have to subtract it from your worth, yes. Because it's an asset that you own, but it's what minus what you owe as your liabilities equals your net worth. Now, if you didn't owe anything, your house was free and clear, then your net worth would be three hundred thousand dollars. You paid off your mortgage. Woohoo! Thirty years later, right? Yeah. Woohoo! Thirty years later, <laughs> finally, yay! You know, you paid it. So now, remember the equation we had for our net income? What was that equation? Go back. Go back to your notes. Revenues equals what? Revenues minus expenses equals what? Net income, smashing. So now for the balance sheet, we have another equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Assets, what you own, your car. Liabilities, what you owe, the bloody bank for the note, right? And then owner's equity is after that, like your, what stake you have in the company. Always balances, everything in accounting equals. This equal signs means a lot to us. Equal signs mean that. They equal, debits equal credits. Okay, this is always in balance. So if your assets are $300,000, this plus this, liabilities plus owner's equity, has to equal what? $300,000. Perfect. 
Perfect, perfect. So, assets is the value that is you own. And usually in your assets, you start always with cash because you start in order of liquidity, meaning how quickly you can turn stuff into cash. So in our pizza example, we'll have cash. We may have something known as accounts receivable, which means customers owe us money. And then we probably will have inventory, right? We're gonna have to keep track of all our pizza boxes and how much flour we have. So that's also an asset, things that we own. And current means that they will kind of mature within a year. So we separate, we call a balance sheet as classified. And if you look at your balance sheet projections here, you'll see some of this as well. You'll see total current assets. And you'll see we have cash, we have accounts receivables, inventory, and prepaid expenses. Current meaning you will convert that into cash within one year. So far so good? Okay, now fixed assets, this is where our machinery and equipment come in. Now fixed assets are longer than a year. Hopefully we buy this pizza oven for $50,000 and it'll last us five or 10 years. Furniture and fixtures, you know, hopefully you'll have tables and chairs for people to come and enjoy your pizza. So that you wanna make sure, hopefully that will last a few years. These hold improvements is if you rented your location, so we rented this spot, you know, so we can be really accessible right there in the heart of, you know, downtown and make sure everybody sees us. So now we got to make it more comfortable for our business. So we're going to change the lease a little bit, you know, to make improvements. So basically we're right at a bigger counter because we want, you know, the pizza place to be like that. And land and building are just, if you end up buying the location, then you would have these. But obviously fixed assets are longer term. Okay. And intangibles are anything that really you can't really touch, right? So, and their net worth is a little bit more difficult to determine because we do something in accounting known as valuations. But for this purpose, it would be goodwill. Some startup costs you can put on your balance sheet. You don't have to expense it. And that's why I included that here. But usually as, when you're starting off as an entrepreneur, this will come later on, okay? But all still assets, things that we own. All right, so we're on that left side of the equation, right, the assets. Now we're doing liabilities and net worth, okay? So liabilities are basically anything, and we list them in descending order, meaning that what's gonna mature first, meaning what's coming due first. So if you have a loan that you've gotta pay in the next month, that would be a current liability. But if you have a loan payment, you know, a year, down, a year and a half down the road, that would be long-term, non-current. And that's things that you owe. And it's usually lenders or owners. Sometimes you start the business and you're doing great, but then you had a little you know, downward peak. So you might go into your 401k and you know, take a loan from that and then give it to, the, to your business. Then you, they would have a loan from you. You want to get paid back for that. So that's an owner investor type of liability. Okay? So it's either from lenders or institutions and then, or from yourself as an owner or other owners if you're a partnership or other forms of businesses like Dr. Pert mentioned. So if you look at that piece now, you'll see here, everything is here for you. And now we have two years beginning, because that should be everything that you have. So hopefully you have some money in a bank account. Hopefully you might have bought some equipment. And then hopefully you have some owner's equity, because that will balance out whatever money you put in. And then you have projected, basically for that year or two or three, where you think you'll have. Maybe you'll have a lot more money now, and you'll have a lot more equipment because you've used some of the money that you've made in the business to buy more pizza ovens or better technology or something like that. This is a third part of our financial statements, and any bank will ask you for all three of these, or any, anybody that wants to lend you money will ask you for this because then they can tell that you've done your due diligence and your work in figuring out all your planning to make sure that this business will succeed, okay? And that's kind of like the hardest one to under comprehend a little bit because this you're just detailing everything you own as a company and everything that the company will owe. Okay, so we talked about liabilities. Now we're gonna go into further details about that because we're talking about payables and notes payables if you have a bank. And then accounts payable is basically what you owe your vendors. Maybe that pepperoni guy that I bought 10 pounds of pepperoni from, because I really like pepperoni, you know, and then maybe he says, oh, pay me in 30 days. So that would be an accounts payable, a liability. I owe him the money in 30 days, so that way I can use my money and try to get more money in so I can pay him. All right, non-current is basically long-term debt. You'll see that LTD. In accounting, we love acronyms. We just can't help it. We don't like to say all these big words. We like LTDs long-term debt. 
and then basically notes payable that loan possibly that you gave you know to the company well that'll be on your notes payable the company owes you that money back And then owner's equity is basically if you have stock, usually when you start a corporation or an S Corp, then an S Corp usually you have less than um, 75 shareholders and most small businesses start at that point so you're not double taxed. And when you do, you have to probably establish some type of stock. So you need to know the legal ramifications that usually an attorney will help you and you have what's known as common stock. And that goes in your owner's equity section. And then basically retained earnings here is what exactly what it says you start off day one and remember when we started with that pizza aroma my income i think we earned like six hundred dollars that would be my net income so this is retained zero and say i earn six hundred dollars and then the next year it keeps adding so maybe next year i earn six thousand dollars so it would start my retained earnings is six hundred and then i'm adding the six thousand for the whole next year that i earn money so it's like every month hopefully earnings that you make all your net income not loss, we're, we're not going to start a business to make a loss, right? And then it just keeps adding. Your balance sheet is cumulative, meaning everything gets added up. So everything goes added and added. And then you have if you pay dividends, and that's usually as you get larger, you'll do that. And then you have your net, um, your ending retained earnings. We love formulas in accounting. Everything balances. So it's retained earnings plus your net income minus your dividends equals your ending retained earnings. So far so good? Smashing. So this is what it looks like. So basically, I did a beta sales company here. See how cash is first, then accounts receivable and inventory. Most financials, if you look at any like publicly traded company, go on SEC Edgar, find Google, find Amazon, Walgreens, McDonald's, you'll see something in this format. They're all the same. We do the same thing. And then fixed assets, the equipment, and our accumulated depreciation is basically what we've used of our equipment to get our net total. And then you see in our current liabilities and long-term liabilities, right? Current means what? Within like one year, right? And so we're going to kind of pay it or use it within one year. So you see wages and accounts payable for my vendor, for my pepperoni guy, you know? And then you see here my bank loan payable, so I got a loan. And then my capital. And here's Tom. I owe him. So he's got, Tom is probably a sole proprietor, Tom Beta, and then he's got 53000 of capital in our company, meaning his equity in, the, in our company. Okay? All right. Those are the financials. Now, one caveat to think about. Any questions on the three financials that you'll give to a bank to hopefully get you some financing? We're good? No, I'll say it at once now. <laughs> Come on. We're okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Smash it. Okay. So now startup costs. What you want to think about here is every, any expense, and you want to include this in your income statement, any expense that you think you're going to have to go through. At the beginning, you're probably going to have to pay an attorney to incorporate you if that's the um, form of business that you'd like. Insurance. You know, utility deposits. Exactly. It kind of all blends in. So we're just telling you here. These are all the things you may need to start the business, and how are you going to pay for it? You or, or somebody else, owner or investor, okay? So keep those in mind. Every little detail is quite important. The more meticulous you do these financials, the more likelihood you are to get any type of financing, and honestly, the better your business will be because you are very astute as to how the company is running, okay? Lastly is assumptions. This is the most important part. These tell you a story, these financial statements. These numbers tell you a story. But if you don't tell me like the, like the backdrop of the story, I have no idea. So those are assumptions. How did you come up with your sales number in your net income statement? How did you come up with how many employees you're gonna need in your expenses? How did you come up with your funding? You know, where did, are you taking it out of your 401k? Are you taking it out of your life savings, your piggy bank, you know? So those are assumptions. How did you decide on the location? You know, did you decide to rent or lease that location? Or did you decide to purchase the building? So those are all assumptions that go along with these statements so that you can let me know the whole story. They should speak on its own. I should be able to pick this up as a banker and accountant, and I should be able to tell you 
Oh, yes, because I have your assumptions. Oh, yes, they have X number of dollars in cash. And oh, look, they're going to make $600 in the first year, but $6,000 in the next year because they're ramping up sales due to all this, all this um, additional money that they're spending on advertising and marketing. Okay? Make sense so far? Good. So basically, how you get to all of this is you start with a budget. And these will kind of be like your budgeting templates, okay? First part is sales. Sales is king. As a new owner, as a new entrepreneur, sell, sell, sell. That's the only way people are going to know your business, right? That's the only way people, customers are going to come and you're going to make money. So sell. That's why we start with the sales forecast. And then we start in this fashion. So basically, we start with sales. So hopefully you're going to sell 10,000 pizzas the first year. Well, with that, you're going to need all the supplies to make 10,000 pizzas. So then you have your inventory, right? You need X number of pounds of dough, pepperoni, cheese. Don't forget the cheese. <laughs> you know, don't forget it. Okay, then operating expenses. How many pizza guys and gals do you need to like roll the dough and put them in the ovens and put them in the boxes and make sure that they're answering the phones? So that's your operating expenses. Then you get to that projected net income that's going to go on what statement again? What statement is the projected net income in? Income statement! <laughs> Smashing! Smashing! And then this is going to be the start of your cash flow. And because you want to make sure you have enough money to do sell all these 10,000 pizzas that you decided you're hopefully going to sell based on your market research and your focus groups and such. Okay? Don't all say okay at the same time now. I can't hear you. Okay? okay. Smashing! No, oh, how smashing! Perfect! So what did we learn? Talk to me. What did we learn? Give me like one good takeaway. Cash is king. Cash is king. Smashing. I love that. What else? Financial statements. Financial statements. Give me one. Income statement. Income statement. What do we have? What do we know about the income statement? What does it tell us? Uh, Equals. Smashing. Oh my god, that's so brilliant. Okay, so give me another statement. I'm so excited now. Give me another one. But even further than that, we're preparing you to possibly start your own business down the road. Although some of you do have businesses already, and um, hopefully you'll be in a better shape to take care of the financial statements and other aspects of the business. As you know, Dr. Paz is a CPA. She's a new professor here at St. Thomas University. We're really happy to have her on board. And like the rest of us, she's available at any time. You just need to call her, make an appointment, and she'll be there to help you with your financial statements. Love to. Okay. Thanks. Alright, so just to wrap up, uh, as you know, a number of you have been here for the three sessions. Some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday. And um, I think this has gone pretty well. This is the first time that we have done this. And we hope to do this each year. So, just to um, recap, we started with Professor Rojo. Uh, Rojo, the first week of the business model canvas. We looked at um, the vision that you have, your mission statement, and uh, we also looked at 
the strategic options that you have available to you. Uh, generally speaking, companies have three options, or small businesses have three options. You can focus on being a low-cost producer, which means that you try to keep your costs low so that you can provide uh, lower prices for your customers. You can focus on differentiation, where you don't care too much about the cost, but what you do is that you try to provide something different for your market, something that stands out from the pack. And for the niche, what you're doing there is that instead of focusing on the entire market, you're finding a small portion of the entire market and, market and focusing on that small part of the overall market. One thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to make sure that in any area that you are, that you have a good understanding of the industry. What does that mean? You have to do your research. You have to make sure that you read a lot. You try to keep up with what's happening in a particular industry, especially in the world that we are now where things change so quickly, you don't want to be left behind. So you need to make sure that you keep up with everything that is going on. In terms of uh, marketing, this is an area that I dealt with especially a few weeks ago. And uh, Dr. Green Garden, that was it last week as well. The importance of establishing a need for your product. Realizing the market around you and seeing what the market actually needs and trying to supply that particular need. Uh, one thing with marketing is that you can't have a product that fits the needs of all customers. So what you need to do is to do target marketing where you decide on a certain group of customers that you want to satisfy, and then you develop products to satisfy them. And of course, the market strategy, you always have to go up with a good strategy. And even more importantly, remember that over time, your strategy could change. As the environment changes, you need to make modifications to your strategy as well. And as Dr. Paz, spoke about a while ago in Dr. Ogazan last week, making sure that you know what your financial statements are, making sure that you put a lot of time into preparing them, making sure that they're accurate, uh, making sure that you understand the financial reports that you're receiving or generating. Uh, the importance of assumptions and planning and making sure that you do proper budgeting, developing your pro forma statements and so on. So finally, what we'd say to you is make sure that you know your job, know the area that you are interested in, in getting into. Uh, knowledge is what is going to move you along. The people who have the best information are the ones that go ahead and are more successful in the long run. So know your job, know your situation. Uh, work hard, do what you have to do in order to succeed. Don't give up easily. There are going to be challenges along the entrepreneurial journey, but those that succeed are the ones who stick to it and are willing to go through the tough times, the bad times, in order to get to the goals that they have. But before we finish, just uh, do you have any additional questions about anything? Uh, one thing, Dr. Paz, uh, would you like to suggest any software that they could use for the um, accounting. Oh, yes, you mentioned actually, QuickBooks. QuickBooks is probably, in, anytime you're doing a new business, QuickBooks is probably your best bet. And it's very easy. You can actually get some student pricing on it as well. And it does a lot of the accounting for you. And it's pretty intuitive. It has pictures. I love pictures. It tells mm -hmm. you a little bank. You click it when you receive money. It shows you a little check. You click it when you want to pay your bills. And, um, and that's probably the easiest software to use to start that. And I have all of these in Excel, so if you just email me, I'll be more than happy to send them to you, and we, you can get started with that. And then there's all formula-driven. I've created some macros and stuff in that, so it'll make sure for you that it ties out. So if it'll like splash it in red for you. No, assets do not equal liabilities and owner's equity. So if you need that, if you don't want to purchase the software, then it's in Excel, and we can do that too. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, so... Um, we have Global Entrepreneurship Week coming up, uh, the third week of November. From November 20 to 22, we'll celebrate it here at St. Thomas University. 
And on Thursday the 21st, that is when we'll have our student entrepreneur competition. And we're encouraging all of you to sign up for that. It's going to be competitive and um, you're going to be able to win prizes and you know both cash prizes and also consulting and uh, mentorship, a number of different things there that we're packaging for you. So that's it. Uh, if you have any other questions, if not, then we'll call it today. Thank you very much.